Hello, this is Professor Immler here. Today we're going to look at several of the most commonly missed items from this unit's quizzes. The first thing we're going to look at is consistent versus inconsistent statements. So to begin with, let's go over a couple of definitions. Remember, this phase of the class we are only dealing with statements that can either be true or false. We are not looking at things like opinions or commands. Next, when we talk about logically consistent statements, we refer to a set of statements, not just one, which can all be true at the same time. Inconsistent statements are the inverse of this. They are a collection of statements that cannot all be true at the same time. With these definitions in place, let's take a look at some of the common questions that were missed. Here's a chart showing the lettering of the statements in our exercise. We'll use this lettering scheme for the sake of continuity, just in case you're following along with your text or with your quiz results. So first, the first question is, are the sentences below consistent or inconsistent statements? Statement F, Socrates is a person. Statement G, Socrates will never die. Now we can easily imagine a world where Socrates is both a person and can never die. Notice that in statement F, there's nothing about mortality. Maybe it's the case that some things are persons and some of those things do not die. Just going off the two statements themselves, there's nothing that precludes that possibility. So they are consistent statements. Now we're going to look at the next one, and we're only going to look at two here, just for the sake of time. So are the sentences below consistent or inconsistent? Statement B, there are exactly seven gorillas at the wild animal park. Statement C, there are not more than two Martians at the wild animal park. Statement D, every giraffe at the wild animal park is a Martian. This is also a consistent set of statements. We are not told how many giraffes there are at the park. And so each one of these could be true. Uh, now, if we included statement A, there are at least four giraffes at the wild animal park, then we would have a contradiction as statements C and D imply that there are only two Martian giraffes at the park. Next, we are going to look at logically equivalent and logically contradictory statements. This is similar to what we've just talked about, but it is distinct. So let's look at the definitions. An equivalent set of statements consists of two or more statements that have the same truth values. This is in contradistinction with contradictory set of statements, which are two or more statements that have different truth values and so cannot be both true at the same time. So here we are concerned with the matching truth values of the statements involved not whether all of the statements can be true at the same time. A slight distinction, but an important one. Let's look at the problems we missed the most. Our first problem. Here are the statements for the first problem. Statement A, all mammals dissolve in water. Statement B, if you put an elephant in water, it will disintegrate. Elephants are mammals. So there we have our first link between the two sentences. If a claim is being made about all mammals, that claim will also apply to all elephants. Both sentences claim that the subject of the sentence disintegrates in water. That claim is false, so both claims are false. In this way, they are equivalent statements. They're both false, but equivalent nevertheless. But let's assume that all mammals do, in fact, disintegrate into water, turning these into true statements. If that were the case, a would be true, and since elephants are a type of mammal, B would also be true. Thus, they would still be logically equivalent. Now, let's look at problem two. This one is a little bit more interesting. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, the statements themselves. Statement C, Bud Powell suffered from severe mental illness. Statement D, all piano players suffer from severe mental illness we see right off the bat that both sentences talk about things that suffered from mental illnesses. In sentence C, it is Bud Powell. In sentence D, 
it is all piano players. Now here's where things get a bit interesting. What we don't know just on these two sentences is how Bud Powell relates to the set of piano players. In history, Bud Powell is a famous jazz piano player. Here's a screenshot from Wikipedia showing this. On this basis, that Bud Powell was a piano player, the two subjects are linked. And if all piano players suffer from severe mental illnesses, as in statement D, then we would expect Bud Powell to do so, which is exactly what sentence C claims. Okay, so now here's where there's a little bit of room for interpretation. As we said earlier, nothing in sentence C or D tells us whether Bud Powell is a piano player. So we might argue that we don't know enough to make either a claim of equivalence or of contradiction. But if you know anything about piano players, you know that they that C is true, and so they are logically equivalent. I just wanted to mention that. Now, let's look at our last concept, which deals with the truth values of individual statements. So tautologies, contradictions, and contingent statements. Let's first go through the definitions. Okay, a tautology. That's a statement which is logically true no matter what the world is like. Then we have contradictions. Those are statements that are logically false no matter what the world is like. And then we have contingent statements, which are most statements. A statement which is true or false depending on what the world is actually like. So you can see how this would apply to most statements. Okay, now let's take a look at one of the problems that was often missed. So we want to know, is the statement a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingent statement? So here it is. If wood were a good building material, it would be useful for building things. Here we have an if-then statement about wood. We'll see later this is a conditional statement. If wood is useful in building, then wood is a good building material. Now, the question is, is there a possible world where that statement is false? Is there a possible world where that statement is true? Well, let's take a look. How might the world actually be configured? What's the actual world like? Well, it's possible that wood is either useful in building things or it's not. So let's make a table showing this. Here we have the consequent, which is the, the last part of a conditional, the then part of it. Wood is useful in building things. That can either be true or false. Now let's add in to our table the antecedent, which is the if or the first part of a conditional statement. So you see here, we have the table that includes the consequent here and the antecedent here. And if the consequent is true, well then the antecedent is going to be true. If the consequent is false, then the antecedent will also be false. And so here we might, we might be tempted to say that since we have some trues and falses on this table, that the entire statement is contingent. And notice this would be true if we were talking about them separately. But notice we aren't doing that. We are linking them together as a conditional statement. As we will see later on in the class, if both the antecedent and the consequent of a conditional statement is, are both false, then the statement as a whole is true. So let's add all this in and take a look at our completed chart. So here we have the consequent, the antecedent, and then the entire sentence. So here we have true, true, and then the whole sentence would be true. And then our second line, we have false and false, which means that the whole sentence is true. Okay, so this would be a tautology because as we said at the beginning of this section, a tautology is a statement which is logically true no matter what the world is like. And we've looked at the two ways that worlds can be relative to the statement, either that wood is good at building things or it's not. No matter what the world is actually like, the statement itself will be true. Okay, so there you have it. Here's a quick discussion on some of the problems that we've missed uh, concerning different types of logical statements. As always, stay open-minded and curious, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.